In my many years gardening, I've failed to grow something nearly as much as I've succeeded, to be honest with you guys. So in today's video, I've asked you what your biggest garden failures are, and I'm going to react to them, perhaps offer some encouraging wisdom. We're here by the pond, there's a little bit of a peaceful moment, but I'm a little lonely and I need help from someone on the team who's really well versed in garden failures. Why'd you call me here? Oh, I was just saying like, you're really good at gardening and I wanted like a helpful ear. Oh, okay. You know, someone who kind of knows what they're doing. Yeah, sure, let's do it. So we're, today we're reacting to some garden failures from the audience shock. Let's start <laughs> with number one. Spiro Miller says, first house I could have an in-ground garden in, planted a good variety of veggies, didn't check my soil for lead. Turns out exterior paint was 2% lead, contaminated the whole yard. We found it before we ate anything and the level was low enough that the fruiting crops were fine, but I had to pitch all my root crops. Test first, plant second. I'll be honest, I could have made that mistake here, Jacques, because I I did a light test in my soil, but I didn't do like a heavy metals test or anything like that. Could have hurt me. Yeah, actually, I've never done a heavy metals test. I know that they're available and there are like programs regionally that you could actually use. That's like a, definitely like a little bit of a scary wake up call fail. Yeah. It's not the end of the world, but it's definitely a good idea to probably do that first. What I would say is if you're gonna, if you're buying a property, you really should invest the maybe $100, $150 to do a, a very complete soil test. Certainly not gonna be the most expensive expense when you're buying a home. <laughs> yeah, there's there's much more true. expensive things and it makes such a difference in the garden that it could be a make or break. So good thing for Spiro that it didn't turn out super badly. Probably he could remediate that soil, but it could have been a lot worse. Caitlin Middow, hopefully I said that right. When I first started a garden, I took all my starter plants and directly put them into our garden. I should have added manure or compost because I didn't realize that our garden soil was basically sand. We almost lost all of our plants after realizing the soil wasn't retaining any water. So that's an interesting one because usually you can do a pretty quick test like with a mason jar where you could figure out basically if you have a lot of clay or sand. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those weird things where if you have too much clay, if you have too much sand, adding compost solves both issues. So, it is weird, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so a lot of the times, People will think with too heavy clay, which actually Jock, Jock and I both suffer from yeah. in our climate, that you want to add in sand to fix the clay, or you want to add in a bunch of perlite into your native soil. So certainly if you add sand, you're almost creating a concrete type of structure. <laughs> yeah. So that will go really Don't badly for you. And the sand one is tricky because when you have sand and straight sand, the water just going to run right through. So that's just a hard yeah. situation to garden with. Yeah, I mean, sand has high porosity and very low nutrient retention, and clay is basically the, the exact opposite. Exactly. So something to bring them both towards that healthy middle is a good idea. Levy Bob says, I stupidly allowed these green giant beetles to fly around my garden two years ago. <laughs> then all the vegetables started slowly drooping and nothing was growing. Dug everything up and turned out I was really farming grubs. Over 250 in my raised beds. So I had an original Waltz design protein farm from Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> Ahead of my time, I suppose. This is something that Jacques, he, you, can't, you almost can't even bring this bug up with him because he'll lose his mind. So I actually have a video where I sifted probably 250 grubs out of my raised bed mm -hmm. as well. And it's unfortunately, I don't I don't know if there's even a way to prevent it, honestly. Like you can, when they're in the ground, you could use beneficial nematodes. You could sift them, you could pick them, let your chickens at them. But man, yeah. that's a tough one. The thing is, so what you're seeing when you see these big giant, and they're, they're honestly one of the stupider <laughs> bugs that exist. They're these, these big old tank looking bugs. Yep that they're sort of iridescent metallic green, honestly pretty if they weren't so yeah. annoying. Like I remember as a kid, actually, I hit one with a tennis racket and it hit a wall and it just was like, I think I'll keep flying. It just, I don't understand how they have that capacity within them. Apparently they're also nearly blind, oh, but wow. these are these are fig eater beetles yeah. is what we call them, at least in our area. Sometimes so you call them Japanese beetles, it's a different species, but similar similar vibe. They kind of fly around, end of their, their adult life cycle, they bury, uh, down in the soil and then they lay the egg. So you don't even get to see the egg phase of their life. Yeah. So you don't necessarily know exactly where they are. And you'll know, like Levy Bob said, when you start to see things drooping and you're like, well, I don't, I'm not underwatering, I'm not overwatering, <laughs> yeah. what's going on? And then you pull the roots up and there's these little bastards just sitting there kind of getting some free rent. Yeah, and the deal is like, if you have a little bit, no big deal. They're yeah. actually helping break stuff down in your soil. But when you have a lot and they run out of things to eat, they start eating your roots. Yeah. So that's where the problem yeah, yeah. comes in. I'll say this, if there's enough of them flying around that you notice, there's probably <laughs> yeah. too many in the soil. And actually we'll probably put together some material this year for you guys because it's annoying enough and, de and um, demotivating enough that I think it's worth putting a guide out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 
Wolf E. Romeo says, had my wife helped me one year plant carrot seeds, she had dumped the whole packet into one hole. <laughs> Look, I mean, we've all been at the beginning of our gardening journey, right? It's it's the education of how does a plant grow? It's totally understandable if you don't know how carrots grow that you wouldn't know that that's not what you should do with carrots. Yeah, you're going to end up with a lot of like little shoestring carrots or maybe nothing at all. But You might you might get nothing at all. You might honestly they'd be so on each other yeah. that I've had it where I've grown microgreens before where they stick and they actually lift each other out of the soil oh, because yeah. they're just too too to clumped go. together. The best case scenario there is you've got some carrot microgreens, which honestly, that's not too bad, but you know, hopefully she learned the next time around. Reactor Doctor says, when we were first married, we planted a small garden with a long row of peanuts. The plants were lush and beautiful. When it was finally time to harvest the peanuts, my hubby took a big container out and began digging. Before digging, he let out our four dogs. Down the long row he went, digging and dropping the plants in the bin. Never once did he look behind him. If he had, he would have seen those dogs lined up, taking turns grabbing a plant, eating the peanuts, and lining back up again. He never noticed until the end of the row, and there were no peanuts. I have to say, I'm both jealous and sympathetic to this scenario, because yeah. there is a video that I've unlisted here on YouTube. I was too embarrassed to even show you guys. Cut. We might put a clip up, we might not. I might even be too shamed to show you, but I did a video a long time ago called, and I no, no joke, it's called, my pathetic peanut harvest <laughs> and it's me harvesting one plant i grew where i got five undersized peanuts and i roasted them in a small pan and i put them in a small dish and buttered and salted them and i ate them on camera Ugh. and honestly they were absolutely delicious i have to say <laughs> but here's why to me that's sad job yeah. is peanuts is something we both failed to grow multiple seasons in a row have you failed i mean i failed but i've had minor success you failed less badly than yeah, i have i'm, I'm I would failing say. uphill <laughs> the thing about peanuts is it's a legume so it's a bean crop but it's an unusual one in that it sprouts and then it actually the flowers turn downwards and go underground yeah, it's really and then the bean it's not really a bean but you get it the legume is, is formed underground it's just a challenging crop to grow unless you're in like the deep south it yeah. does really well in the american deep south so i can imagine having the dogs munch it it's 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 a dog just eating 90 days of your life yeah. every time it goes At down the road at least 90 days it's a great story though so happy good dogs. story happy dogs maybe all as well nerdy suburban farmer says my first year planting garlic i overwintered them in the freezer instead of the fridge <laughs> couldn't figure out for weeks why nothing was sprouting yeah yeah i mean that's a tough one that's tough that's a tough loss I, the reason why this is understandable yeah is because you actually can store seeds in the fridge I don't think you would recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's possible for like long-term seed storage provided you're not like opening the freezer drawer a lot. Yeah. So I can see why someone might think that seed garlic could be put in the fridge. Yeah, and I guess it's closer to winter if you were to try to fake a winter, but the yeah, garlic that's, that's true, underground that's yeah. isn't supposed to freeze. Not you're supposed, supposed to, to bury it deep enough to not freeze. You just want it to get really cold. So the fridge is where you should put your garlic if you're trying to vernalize. From a scientific level too, the reason why it's not working for oh, right. you if that happens is because a garlic clove, while it might look sort of inanimate, it actually is quite full of water. And so the water will actually burst in the cells and it will actually explode the plant cell walls. And so by the time it comes out, it, it's literally dead now. There's no ability for yeah, it, it to, to continue life. It's done. Yeah, it's done. The Acadian Garden and Apothecary. I planted corn for the first time last year. When the stalks started branching, <laughs> I, I snapped them off, thinking it would hinder the growth of the cobs, not realizing those were the cobs. <laughs> LOL, whoops. <laughs> to me, this is just so funny. And it's not a funny making fun of you, yeah. but more just like, I totally get it. Because how would you know if it's if it's your first time it's a weird plant there are plants that you would prune off these offshoots yeah like a sucker on a tomato maybe <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like something like that you know before they start actually sizing up on the cob it is kind of hard to tell it's not really obvious it's sort of a yeah, cluster a wrapped cluster of leaves like a cob. <laughs> so i can imagine someone coming out and just chopping it all snapping down. them all down so it's these straight <laughs> poles and then like two months later you're like hey, where's my corn <laughs> <laughs> so look I personally, I can empathize with that. It's not one I've done myself, but honestly, nine or 10 years ago, I could have easily seen myself doing that. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good, dude. <laughs> Effortless gardening. Turns out popcorn seeds don't turn into regular corn. <laughs> Plus later found out you need more than four plants for good pollination and earwigs were also annoying and oh, yeah. disgusting. 
if there's one bug that you don't like more than the fig eater beetle, it's probably earwigs. Yeah, luckily the earwigs have disappeared for over a year now. Yeah. But all those things that they said are entirely true. They were big during uh, 2020. Yeah. During big, during during the pandemic, the earwigs seemed like they were also <laughs> their own version of a <laughs> yeah. pandemic. They were out here. But um, yeah, I mean, look, corn is a challenging plant. We, we put a guide out a couple of years ago now about how to grow it from seed to harvest that covers a lot of these sort of ba basics of corn. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like the reason why you don't get good pollination if you plant only four of them is because you need at least four by four square feet of it yeah. to grow well. Or you have to manually pollinate. And then, yeah, like the popcorn is going to make a popcorn corn. Mm -hmm. So there are different varieties within corn, just like there's sweet corn, there's also popcorn, so. Yep, sweet corn, popcorn, dent corn. The corn that almost all of us probably want to grow is, is the sweet corn. Yeah. Michael Woodbury. Ordering wood chips for free from Chip Drop, and they dumped about five dump truck loads while I wasn't home. That was two years ago, and I still have five foot tall mound to spread out. The pile was taller than the six foot fence around my yard and about 20 to 30 feet long. I will never do that again. I have a two and a half foot deep layer covering my entire quarter acre back wow. of my house. So this is actually a really common scenario for people who use Chip Drop <laughs> to the point where Chip Drop themselves, which is a if you don't know, it's a free service that connects an arborist with a homeowner who wants the wood chips. So the arborist can just dump them on your property instead of paying to dump them somewhere mm -hmm. else. They actually get used. Yep. But Chip Drop put out an ad, I don't know if you ever saw it, that said, don't use Chip Drop. <laughs> Have you seen that? <laughs> no. Yeah, so they, they put a whole ad out that said, if you don't want X, Y, Z to happen, like just don't use Chip Drop because they, it's a great service, but that could happen to you. Yeah. Where you just wake up one day and all of a sudden, you have, you know, Montezuma's Revenge sitting on top of your front yard. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right <laughs> phrase there, but whatever. You can get something you didn't want on your front yard. Great service, but uh, yeah, a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, I guess that's at least enough chips to last them their lifetime. <laughs> so. yeah, I guess so. He's two years deep <laughs> yeah. already, so he's good. <laughs> okay, okay, this one's good. Rachel Shadon. I once watered tomato plants with milk. I had three tomatoes that had blossom and rot which the internet told me was caused by insufficient calcium, mm. usually due to inconsistent moisture. So I was like, what has calcium and is also wet? <laughs> Milk. Then I poured two thirds of a gallon on each of them. I have never seen a plant die so fast. It was Oklahoma in the summer and the soil was warm. So the milk curdled pretty much the moment it hit the ground. It was not my best gardening moment. <laughs> But once I told the story to a friend and he laughed so hard that he fell out of his chair. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just imagining. I love that. I'm just That's imagining great. Rachel going out. <laughs> imagine you're going to the store and buying like six gallons, six gallons of milk and, and the cashier's like, you have a party? <laughs> I just got a bunch of tomatoes. I just got to save my tomatoes. <laughs> and it's like a hot, sweaty oh. Oklahoma summer. Oh my God. And she goes out and two thirds of a gallon, like in water terms, that's, no, that's like a normal watering yeah, session for, to, for yeah. a tomato plant, like in a grow bag or something. And she's just like, I'll save you. <laughs> Maybe that's like fine. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's not going to cause any issues, yeah. like some weird fertilizer, but. That Oklahoma heat. That got Oklahoma that heat. Cheese that, right away. <laughs> that curdle. <laughs> and there's the sugars in it, the fats. Yeah. It's like, th there is this misconception, I think, about using food <laughs> to feed the plants, like directly. Right. And, and a lot of the times, you know, things have to go through a natural decomposition cycle totally. before they become available. And actually, Rachel was onto a good point where she said, you know, insufficient calcium caused by insufficient moisture. And then she made the assumption that she had to solve both of those problems. Right. But the calcium was actually already in the soil and it was just not being made able to transport by the water problem. It's a really logical conclusion that she would have made yeah, there absolutely. With, with an absurd and sort of hilarious <laughs> <Yeah>. end result. <laughs> Don't try it home. Anna Bland says, my first year, I'll plant some cucumbers. Tossed a whole packet of cucumber seeds into the garden, didn't trellis anything. I was picking 50 plus cucumbers per week and I had to dig through itchy vines, tangled all over the ground to find them. Oh, and I didn't like pickles yet. <laughs> this is, I, didn't, I mean, this is common, Yeah. right? Like you're, especially in your first year, some people go too big, some people don't go big enough. Uh, and, and in this case, I think Anna went a little too big with one crop. It's a matter of plant, edu plant education. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, that's a lesson learned, I'm sure. They don't know how many <laughs> cucumber plants they need. They know they need to support it. 
I'll tell you what, the first year I was growing tomatoes, we just put them out there, threw on like that little tomato cage, and we're like, all right, that's it. Yeah. Three months later, there's sticks from all over the yard shoved <laughs> in the ground. There's strings running from it, like one of those crazy diagrams on like a corkboard. Yeah. And it was like a jungle floating on a bunch of wires throughout my garden. You so know what? You know I've learned on that one too. What's funny about that, Jacques, is that both you and Anna and me in the past as well, if I've overplanted, I don't then just realize. I can take some out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And as I'm imagining, you're like, what do I do with all these tomatoes? You're like, I need to c c create this contraption. Yeah. The answer could be to remove, right? Yeah. Uh, and also with Anna sort of crawling around in this jungle and not even liking the harvest, there is this absurdity that we as gardeners can get to yeah, where absolutely. you get into this fever dream of what you've committed to as a gardener and you don't realize like, oh, I can undo what I've done. Um, you can walk away. You, you can walk away, you know, and if you love it, you can let it go as, as we've learned from, from Passenger, you know. This is from Lil Ace. This season I grew Carolina Reaper peppers thinking it would be fun. <laughs> I chopped some up to give to a friend. I thought I washed my hands thoroughly, but after using the restroom a bit, I learned I was dead wrong. <laughs> Have you been there? I don't I've know about there. the restroom, but I have touched my eyes. Here's what I did once. I had, thank God it wasn't a Carolina Reaper, yeah. but with a habanero, and this is before, this is like early on in my gardening career, but I hadn't actually grown this. This is like a plant from the store. I had eaten a habanero, it was like a spice test. Oh, okay. And then immediately decided it'd be a good idea to change out my contact lenses. <laughs> and for two hours, I was Captain Red Eyes. Like I was completely like streaming from the eyes. So, and I, I, I mean, it, I thought I was gonna die. Like, yeah. it, was, it was that bad. It's bad when you like, when you accidentally like touch part of your skin and then all of a sudden it's like you could feel burning mm -hmm. on your skin. On the skin. And then you know that where else have I touched? And that's just that first warning sign. Yeah. So yeah, definitely been there. We've all when been I there. When I make hot sauce, I wear gloves now. Exactly. I love that. That was like the weakest high five I think we've ever done. <laughs> this one is from Ronski. Used to have as black of a black thumb you could possibly imagine. After killing many plants in a row, I tried my hand at a cactus garden, thinking, if I can keep this alive, I'll go back to vegetables. Came back home after a vacation, realized it probably needed some water. So I grabbed a not see-through bottle I usually kept water in. I had forgotten I used that bottle for Gatorade shortly before leaving. Fun fact, some cacti smoke if you pour Gatorade on them. <laughs> to this day, I'm still scratching my head. They shriveled up after a few days. I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> I have no idea what could have caused that. The sugar in the in the in the Gatorade, like smoking. I feel like we almost have to try to recreate this at some point. I don't know if this is real or if he has some. He's discovered some <laughs> new botanical technique. The only thing I can think of is the bottle was in the sun. It was really hot. You poured it in, and mm. there's some sort of lens effect that actually evaporated and made it just okay. look like you know smoke. Yeah, it's the only thing I can think of. But I, you know, I will say it is common to go to an easier plant if you fail uh, with gardening. And and cactus is actually a surprisingly tricky one too. It's, it's weird. It, people yeah. think it's like a really like easy one, but it grows so slowly that you always feel like you have to do something and then you end up doing too much. And then you, you, you do it. too much to it. Aloe is a great example. People try to grow aloe yeah. and they water, water, water. It blows up and, and you're, you're dead. I think what's funny is people will say, well, I can't even keep a succulent alive. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, because a lot of the people who tell me that they keep it indoors and water it a lot. And I'm like, that's just, of course you can. That's the exact yeah. opposite of what you should probably be doing with it. All this to say, we commiserate with you. Neither of us are expert gardeners by any means. We've just been doing it a long time and we love it a lot. So we've learned a lot and you can too. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the fails video. Let us know some other fails down below. Check out our store or botanical interest for some seeds. And until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.